any more time, um, I will just introduce to you our next speaker. And not only, only does he have a beautiful name, but uh, uh, which is difficult for me to, I think it is Ero Pukala. Thank you. <laughs> Not only does he have a beautiful name, but he also is from a country that has a very interesting language, um, which is different from almost all other European languages and has very long words. And uh, he also has uh, a sense of humor. Because he, he tells me, I am the director for research at the Finnish Central Registry. He worked there ever since 1975, which is really a long time, and he's a professor on epidemiology in the University of Tampere. But he also has hobbies. He plays football, he sings classical music in a choir, he fishes, and he plays with his seven grandchildren. And I, 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 I do present this to you because I think it is important that when we work so seriously on topics like this, humor, and a bit of uh, taking distance uh, every now and then is really important. Ero, you have the floor. Thank you, Marianne. This is important, uh, the, the, my, my curriculum. Um, uh, my topic today is it's a very long title, which actually tells all the content. But, but I will not try to tell everything of, of this, uh, our findings, but some examples of which might be interested. And especially take the, the uh, point of view of women. Out of the grandchildren, this is number five, three years. Her name is Celia, and, and she likes forest work. You will understand later why that's a good thing. Uh, let me start from the general view of, of cancer in, in the Nordic countries. The, the lines going up, they show the cancer incidence, how many new cancers are find, uh, found, and, and you see it, it, it going up both in, in men and women, and the lower ones show cancer mortality, dying from cancer, is going down, telling that nowadays 70% uh, of our cancer patients actually cure from, from that disease. Uh, the leading cancer sites are, of course, breast cancer, which was presented here very carefully. And all the others are much more uh, rare. What is increasing steadily is the blue curve, which is colorectal cancer. And, uh, and the orange curve, which is increasing very rapidly, is female lung cancer. So that's it one of the worst problems in, in the Nordic countries, how to stop, make uh, women stop smoking. But the green cell is a survival cancer, and it tells a very good story of uh, how we can prevent cancer by, by screening. The, uh, this cancer is now one-tenth of, of the value it has. Um, we also have quite large variations between the regions in in, uh, in the Nordic countries, and let me take the story of lung cancer here, if this works. Yes, the, the blue color means that it's very low incidence of, of breast cancer, and now we are in the beginning of 1970s, and, and it, it was only a some, some uh, epidemic in, in the Copenhagen where the, the smoking queen is showing example to all others, but if we then let the time run, you can see in the 1980s, the Iceland, Icelander women start to get lung cancer, and then hold them mark, and now the Norwegians find the oil and get the money to buy tobacco, and, and you see it, uh, it really, really uh, big differences in the incidence, depending on the behavior. And, of course, part, part of this behavior is the work life. And, uh, this is another illustration of uh, differences between population groups in, 
in, uh, in cancer risk, and those are cancers which are far more common on, in, the, in the lower socioeconomic layers, badly educated people. And you see, like, cervical cancer, double risk, if you, you have, are in the lowest group as, as compared to the, the highest one. Or esophageal cancer, even more. And that's related to alcohol drinking and smoking combined. Um, the Nordic women, they are very, very well occupationally active. So uh, nowadays, 80% of the Nordic women are, uh, are getting, uh, going to work and getting a salary for that before they work at home. So that, therefore, it's, it's very natural it's in, 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 that in, in Nordic studies, we, of course, pay attention on, on women. And let me uh, come now to this Nordic Occupational Cancer Study called NOCTA. So I'm, I have been leading it for some years, and I have some people here, men and women, very strong-minded women, I would say. Uh, and the, in short, we take all working age populations from five Nordic countries and then follow that. We know the uh, occupation in one census, 1960, 70, 80, 90 onward. And then we follow the cancer risk in each occupational category. And in this uh, first phase of, of NOCA, we had three million observed cancer cases during this follow up, telling that, that we surely can get very solid estimates of risk also for women. And everything was studied parallelly, similarly for men and women. We have now published maybe 100, 150 papers out of this study. You research one on breast cancer. My doctoral student, Rusmita, is very proud to be mentioned here. Uh, and uh, because uh, has been quite actively needed this information. Now we have a new project, it's called NOCA New, which will then extend the follow-up and add some more modern ex exposures and so on to the to frame. These are the occupations with uh, highest and lowest uh, cancer risk. They all cancers taken together. So, so and and here in the bottom you see forest workers, they have low risk. Therefore, I, I use this photo. But uh, the highest you can guess the exposure of tobacco industry workers. But let's, let's go back to breast cancer, which you already demonstrated, actually, more or less the, the same pattern. And you see here that in the, in the bottom there are. Oh, uh, in, in the upper end, there are journalists, journal physicians, so on, uh, directors of, of uh, companies, and so on, uh, highly educated groups. They have the highest risk of get, getting breast cancer. And here it's a bit like it is the same message, but here we have added the average age at first childbirth. Of, of in, in persons in, in this uh, category. And if the breast cancer is slow, the average age is about 22 years. If the, the risk is uh, high, then we have the first child in the age of 26, meaning that the education, need, need of education is, is enormous risk of, of breast cancer. Uh, there's one exception, the princess. They, they make babies at young age, but still have a high risk. And this is already a sign of some uh, occupation-specific carcinogens, which uh, increase to this risk. And let's take another uh, common cancer in women, ovarian cancer. Princess are again on the top. And we know that in the princess, uh, Job, there are many, many chemical solvents and, and, and dust and so on. So you can recognize this 
uh, uh, these chemicals from this pattern already. Or the second one was mentioned, hair pressure. We don't have these snail things, whatever, as a specific category yet, maybe in the next one. But let, let me take uh, lung cancer. Again, all Nordic women. You see quite a huge difference between the high risk occupations and low risk occupations. It's uh, something like fourfold difference between uh, the tobacco factory workers and farmers. But I, I now pick up one the restaurant waiter here. And, and that's uh, an that's, uh, occupational category which has been discussed quite much in the, in the late, uh, especially when we spoke about the banning of smoking in, in, the, in the restaurants. Uh, and, and they were exposed in uh, passive and active smoking and probably on, on drink, drinking alcohol because there are half, half full bottles everywhere. And if we now look, look at the uh, cancer pattern of, of um, alcohol-related cancer, mouth, tongue, throat, esophagus, liver. So, so you see waiters again on the, on the top there. But it's only 1.5 for excess in, in women. If we take men, same. It's the restaurant, male restaurant waiters in the Nordic countries, they have huge, huge risk of alcohol-related cancer. Uh, I pick up uh, some numbers of uh, doctoral thesis of, 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 uh, which deals with um, Nordic restaurant workers and their excess cancer risk. And you understood that the, the males, they have the huge relative risk of alcohol-related cancer. But still, if we look at the uh, excess cancer risk, which are ex on how many ex excess cancers above the normal amount the restaurant waiters have. The lung cancers among female wait waiters are still the, the worst problem. And the second highest actually is cervical cancer. And the, the alcohol-related cancers, they are so rare in the, here on the, on the right side that even if the relative risk is, is big, the absolute risk is not, not that important. Then, then we come to a question. These were occupational sizes, but they did not tell about the amount of specific exposures, chemicals, and so on. So the question we put to ourselves is that can we estimate amount of occupational exposure for every Nordic person? So when 8 million uh, men and 8 million women. Uh, and this is the answer. Of course, we are not examples. And uh, the, the key word here is the uh, not a job exposure matrix. Actually, we have a leader of our exposure committee, Jonik, you stand up. So he is leading the so, if anything is, is wrong with the, our estimation, we can blame him. They had meeting last week. Or, yeah. So, basically, you can recognize here the, the, the standard things as the stored solvent, uh, diesel exhaust, this type. But uh, I must regret the, some of these modern so called occupational. Exposures, which is uh, lack of uh, physical activity at work, so sedentary work, that, that increases certainly my risk. And so much in breast cancer, that, that, that's a big thing. Night shift work was mentioned here, and, and we quite well believe that it, it has an effect on cancer risk, on breast cancer, and some other, uh, especially hormone related. Is with different mechanisms. I, I take an example of how we, in, in practice, uh, estimate the doses. For instance, thank you. 
pattern uh, uh, for, for a, a disease. And I, by purpose, uh, uh, extremely rare cancer. So we have not all adenocarcinoma. There's about one such cancer per year in, in the country. Can we really do some meaningful study on that? And, and that's, that was one of the topics because there are so few exposed to women in, 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 in uh, several occupations that it has been not easy to study their cancer risk. Here we have men and women exposed to wood dust, and the question was whether there is a hazard related to this exposure. Uh, the the 1.0 in the bottom is, is a reference value, that's a normal level, but those with, with high uh, wood dust exposures, they have 30 fold excess risk of getting this cancer, no matter whether they are men or women. And, and if we think that the, the limit uh, of compensation as an occupational disease is a relative risk of two, this means that uh, say, a uh, sawmill worker who has been working in a sawmill for five years already has, has this high risk. So it's a very easy case, case for compensation. So basically, my conclusions are that women and men doing the same job, they have normally, they have same relative excess risk. So it's no gender difference. So if you are exposed to, to some carcinogen, it doesn't matter whether you are men or women. Same thing. Uh, one, one exception I would mention here is, is uh, some hormone-related um, cancers or, or uh, exposures which are uh, the effect is uh, affected by hormones. This is a physical workload. How much it reduces uh, the risk of colorectal cancer if you are in a physically active world. And if we look at the numbers for colon cancer, men and women, and, and so those who are in the most uh, desired in, in physical activity, nurses could be there, or, or some, some other heavy work, workers, you see uh, the, they are protected by 26% if they are men, but only by 13% if they are women. So, this physical activity is less good for women, but it's still on positive side. Same with rectal cancer. Um, I, I come to, to this uh, just to link our findings to, to this monograph series. Just uh, when the, the International Agency for Cancer, Research and Cancer is doing the evaluations of what is carcinogenic, what is not. They always check the, the Nordic data and, and then combine it, this with all these smaller uh, studies. And my, to, to compete with, with uh, Emily estimate, so I have an estimate that 5% uh, of the, the cancers both in women and men are directly attributable to work. And here I also count the, the sedentary work as a risk factor. This is, these are made with so-called Eropukkava method, uh, not published. Uh, but then the other, 35% uh, are, could be avoided if the, you know, the all, all occupations would live in the healthy way, the best way. So, socioeconomic position, like that. Okay, and then I, I just give here the link. If somebody, anybody is interested to see the cancer risk in a given occupation to whatever cancer in whatever uh, Nordic country, uh, women or men, similarly, just go to this, this link and you will find the the uh, results in clear English, Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, and Icelandic. 
Ganz viel besser.